Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Joining us here on realagriculture.com at uh, the Canal Lab session in uh, in Brandon today we have Judy Elias. She's with the Canadian Grain Commission's lab in uh, in Weyburn. And Judy, you're talking about dockage in uh, in canola. Maybe take us through uh, through what you're what you're showing the growers uh, at Canal Lab. Okay, so when we're analyzing a sample of canola. We are trying to keep, we're trying to give you the best possible grade with the lowest possible dockage. So one of the big things is admix in canola. You're only allowed 1% admix in a number one. So what, what we're trying to do when we're doing the dockage is to keep that hand pick under 1% and keep you at a number one. So what I've taken here is I've taken a sample of canola and I've taken off the round hole and I've taken off the aspiration. So what I've got left is this, this uh, material and there, where the controversy is, is on the slotted sieve and we're allowed to use five different slotted sieves from an 028 all the way to an 040. So with herbicide resistant canola there's not as many weed seeds these days as there used to be in the past. So I'm going to shake this sample over an 028. And I'm going to get out the small seeds, small canola, and, and broken canola. So now, here's the material that is left on the, over the pan. So this is small seeds, broken canola, small canola. Now if I take that same sample that I just showed, and shook it over an 040 slotted sieve, it's going to take out quite a bit more material. And what I'm trying to show producers is it can take out more material, more small canola, and more broken canola than needs to be taken out. So that could be dockage that shouldn't be included in in the dockage. So when you're delivering canola to the elevator, can you uh, advise or negotiate which which sieve you have used? Not really, um, because you they're allowed to use anything from an 028 to an 040, so your best bet, if you don't think that you're being, uh, that it's fair dockage, then you should ask for a subject to inspector's grade and dockage, and the elevator will send a sample of your load in, and we'll analyze it, and then whatever we determine will be how you will be paid. Okay. And that sample must be taken at the elevator? That's right. That's where both the, the buyer and the seller are together dumping that grain. And that could be, I guess, the, the truck driver representing yeah. the... The truck the driver, would, if it's not the producer, then the truck driver becomes his representative. What's the difference between dockage and, and hand pick? Uh, after normal cleaning, which is dockage, uh, we do a hand pick, and that's the stuff that can't be removed by normal cleaning. And, hand and pick it becomes is a, a, is a grading factor. That's right. Okay. Dockage is, is separate than front. That that's right. Factor. Yeah. So when it comes down to it, uh, the different pan that the elevator uses could make a, the difference of a few hundred dollars per, per truckload for, for canola, so producers need to know what they, what they have in the bin. That's right. We recommend that you have your grain graded before you go to sell it so that you have a good idea of what your average dockage is as well as your grade and then you can make a more informed decision when you're going to the elevator whether or not you need to ask for a subject to if you feel that um, your dockage hasn't been analyzed fairly so, so then you can ask for that subject too. So it's seller beware. Seller beware. Alright, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.